Ivan the Terrible. What's this? A very important message, sir. Ha ha ha. What is it, Ivan? Propaganda. The stupid idiot. Wait. I'm gonna have some fun. Go back and invite him to have lunch with us. Do you think it's wise, comrade? Yes, I want to see him squirm. I'll tear his theories to shreds in front of others. He'll be humiliated and lose his lunch. Ha 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 Oh, Ivan, you're terrible. I know. I wish to thank you for inviting me to lunch. Would you mind if I pray over my food? No. Ha <laughs> ha. You pray and we'll drink. Ha ha ha. Tell me, my friend. Would you be willing to die for your faith? Absolutely. What about you, Ivan? Would you be ready to die for the communist cause? Yes, because it is a just cause. Not an idle dream like you are following. Don't tell us about your Jesus. Instead, tell us what you know about communism. You won't like what I say. Try me. <laughs> Remember, Ivan, you asked for it. Before you start... I want to drink a toast to our glorious Red Army, which is destined for victory. To the Red Army. You have a strange smile on your face. What do you know that I don't? Your glorious Red Army will feed the vultures on the mountains of Israel. Where do you get such nonsense? In the book of Ezekiel, God shows us the destruction of your armies. The Bible says the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. I don't like this religious talk. I told you to talk about communism. But Ivan, communism was born out of religion. It, it is nothing but a baby of the Vatican. What? That is a lie. Marx and Engels were Jews. That was before their secret conversion to Catholicism. Shall I go on, dear Ivan? Note, the Jesuits also worked with Lenin and Stalin to bring them into power, both of whom were of Jewish and Catholic extraction. Engels, Marx, Lenin, and Stalin were all members of the Club of Intellectuals. My God, do you know what you are saying? Careful, Ivan, you don't believe in God. Yes, I know what I'm saying. The Jesuits guided Engels back in the 1800s to create socialism. I think we should stop this right now, Ivan. No, start from the beginning. I've never heard such a thing. Then we must go back to when the Emperor Constantine became the first Pope. The Caesars saw their empire collapsing, so they changed their togas for religious costumes and created a new religion. The true Church of Jesus Christ was already underground by the time Catholicism came into power. The new religion came out of ancient Babylon using the same old gods, but with new names. Jupiter became the Apostle Peter, and Venus became the Virgin Mary. Eventually, Constantine moved to Turkey to set up Constantinople. After Constantine's death, both sides wanted to run the show. It was a power play. Who would control the religious world? Both the bishops in Rome and the bishops in Constantinople claimed to be the true inheritors of apostolic succession. They split into two groups, the Orthodox Catholics in Constantinople and the Roman Catholics in Rome. The Orthodox claim that they were the true successors of Peter and Constantine. Because of this, the Pope cursed them with anathema, which will be in effect until the Orthodox Church accepts the Roman papacy as the only successors of Peter. In 1204, Pope Innocent III sent troops to Constantinople to kill two birds with one stone. His troops killed the Muslims, making the Orthodox think they were being saved, then turned and wiped out the Orthodox Constantinople. Both groups claim that they have the unbroken line from the Apostle Peter to the leaders of today, the Pope and the Patriarch. This delusion is called Apostolic Succession. You must understand that the Orthodox and Roman Catholics are basically the same. But Rome wants to control the governments of the world, while the Orthodox are willing to coexist with the state. Eventually, the Orthodox Church came under the protection of Caesar of Russia 
it grew in numbers and power. As long as the Orthodox Church was protected by the Caesar, it was almost impossible to destroy. So battle plans were prepared in the Vatican. An army had to be prepared to attack the Caesar and murder his heirs, leaving the Orthodox Church defenseless. This army would be expected to establish Russia under the papacy. Many Jesuits were secretly sent into Russia to take key positions when the Caesar's government collapsed. The Jesuits knew that they could not, under any circumstances, let it be known that they were involved. So they worked with Engels and Marx to develop the Communist Manifesto. In order to deceive the Russian people into believing that the destruction of the Caesar was necessary for a new Russia. The world would see it as a political action instead of the religious war that it was. While fires of revolution were smoldering, ready to ignite in the palace of Caesar, a strange man named Rasputin was gaining control over the Caesar and his wife. Alexis is bleeding. Send for Rasputin. Their only son, Alexis, suffered from the disease called hemophilia. The doctor seemed helpless to stop his bleeding, but when Rasputin, the mad monk, came near the boy, his bleeding stopped. The Caesar trusts Rasputin's advice, which led to his downfall. No one suspected that the magical powers Rasputin used were spiritual exercises of Loyola. Rasputin was a faithful Jesuit working undercover. The Caesar's wife told Rasputin many secrets, including where the Caesar had hidden his gold. Rasputin was a triple agent playing all sides before he was assassinated for knowing too much. Rasputin passed the Caesar's secrets on to the patriarch in order to gain his trust. Lenin and other key revolutionaries were placed in the famous sealed train and moved to Germany along with the Pope's gold to pull down the Russian government. Black Knight, White Snow In July 1918, the Caesar and his family were under arrest in Yekaterinburg in the Urals. Part of the White Russian Army was on its way to save the Caesar. A quick trial was held by Ural Soviets, some of whom were undercover Jesuits, who found the royal family guilty. The protector of the Orthodox Church and his family was blasted into eternity. Everything was right on schedule. The executioners moved so fast that the Central Communist Party wasn't even aware of the trial or the killings until it was all over. Orthodox priests, nuns, and monks were being hunted down and executed. The Soviets attacked the monasteries and convents, and the killings began. A strange twist of fate saved the Russian church. The old patriarch had an ace up his sleeve. When the Red Army came to kill the old chief patriarch, he greeted them with open arms and cried, Comrades, at last you have come. We've been waiting for you. We've been holding the Caesar's gold for you, my true comrades. When Lenin arrived in Moscow, crowds of Orthodox civilians and soldiers greeted him with banners and icons, religious pictures, of Virgin Mary. They proclaimed Lenin to be the man the Virgin Mary had sent to be their deliverer. This was engineered by the patriarch to show Lenin that the religious force was willing to support communism. The killings of the Russian Orthodox stopped. The Orthodox Church was saved. The Communists got the Caesar's gold and also kept the Pope's gold, which amounted to $666 million. The Pope was double-crossed, and when he found out, he almost had a heart attack. He had been betrayed by his own Communists. To get even, they built a new machine called the Nazi Party. My God, things are coming into focus. The Vatican wanted the world to believe that communism was created by the Jews. They pointed to the Protocols of Zion as the source of all this conspiracy, actually created by the Jesuits. The Pope and his Jesuits launched their Catholic Nazi crusade against Russia. His hero, Adolf Hitler, failed him. 
they lost the war and after long and secret negotiations, the Vatican now believes that communism will win World War III and Roman Catholicism will be the only recognized religion of the world. She is still determined to make Russia Catholic. The Russian Orthodox Church has fallen to the Vatican through the ecumenical movement and is no longer a threat. That's why the Vatican carefully chose a communist pope from Poland to win Russia. The Jesuits are preparing for many appearances of the Virgin Mary. You see, Ivan, the Vatican intends to sign concordance with the communist countries and is secretly trying to disarm the U.S. The Vatican wants to use communism's muscle in the last great inquisition to conquer the world for the Pope. The Bible tells us the governments will hate the Vatican when they discover her plans and will destroy her. The last Pope, the Antichrist, will flee to Jerusalem and the armies of the world will be sent to destroy this beast. Jesus will return and smash the armies at the Battle of Armageddon. No one will touch the Antichrist because only Jesus will destroy him. The Antichrist, the beast, is found guilty of impersonating Christ and is cast alive into the lake of fire. But I've dedicated my whole life to the party. True peace and justice only comes through world communism. You're wrong, Ivan. You've been betrayed. True communism is only a dream. It will never bring peace, only destruction. The perfect welfare of men will only come through Jesus Christ when he returns to establish his kingdom on earth. Ivan, you can make a decision now, either to be part of Christ's kingdom or be found an enemy of Christ and the people of his kingdom destined to join the Antichrist in the lake of fire. The Bible says there's only one way to heaven. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Nobody else can help you, for there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved, through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. What you must do, pray to God in your own words. And number one, admit you are a sinner, and that only Lord, the Lord Jesus can save you. Number two, repent, be willing to turn away from sin and to submit to God. Three, believe that the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross and shed his blood to pay the price for your sins and that he arose again. Number four, ask God to save you. Number five, ask Jesus Christ to be the Lord, take control of your life. Amen. If you really made Jesus your Lord and King, then act like it. Read your Bible every day to get to know Christ better. And to number two, talk to God in prayer every day. Three, find a church where the Bible is taught and is the complete word of God and is the final authority. Number four, obey Christ's command and be baptized. Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah.